All right. Hi, hi, Fred fam. Um, I'm very sorry, guys. I haven't been around for quite a while. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll get into the swing of making more videos. But for now, I got a special video for you today. Before I get started uh, and start <clears throat> diving into the video, uh, I just wanted to kind of update you guys on what's going on. So I've been prototyping some IEMs recently. Um, I have a little 5BA here. This is an all Sonian uh, build that I'm working on. And then this is the uh, kind of grand jewel, but this is a 10BA. Uh, not really a flagship. Um, it's as close to a flagship as I can get right now. Um, but yeah, so it's a 10 balanced armature setup. It's a combination of Knolls and Sonian. And uh, yeah, 10 balanced armatures. And so anyway, I've been working um, very hard at this. Uh, you can see my messy desk. I have all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been up to lately. Uh, the name of the IM is called uh, Barcelona. So this is uh, Project Barcelona. Uh, I have three uh, people who I'm producing IMs for. And I'll show you guys, I have some materials and stuff uh, to show off, I have some some cool uh, faceplate materials uh, that we'll get into. I got some carbon fiber, uh, and then I got more of the stuff that I was using on Apex. But anyway, so that's pretty much as far as the update goes. I'll show you one more thing real quick before I get into the review. So this is the um, frequency curve of Barcelona. So far, this is not the final tuning. Um, this actually isn't anywhere close to the final tuning. I'd like to get this area here um, in check a little more. It's a little too honky. Um, and I'd like to uh, kind of bring up the air just a little bit. It sounds fine up here, but I just want to bring the air up a little bit. Everything else is decent. There's a couple little issues with power handling. Um, there's a little bit of um, uh, like layering and imaging could be just a little bit better. So anyway, so there's a few things that I need to work on, but this is kind of, kind of gives you an idea of what, what it's going to sound like, um, somewhat similar. But yeah, so it's a 10 balanced armature setup, and that is currently what I'm working on. But as far as today's video goes, um, I have these. These were sent to me by a viewer and a very kind friend, very uh, kind gentleman, uh, who is also um, a customer of Barcelona. So I will be sending them their Barcelona hopefully this week uh, along with everyone else. But anyway, so this is, for anybody that's not aware, this is the Fat Frequency Maestro Mini. So not the Maestro, but the Mini. Um, the Maestro is like 1500 bucks somewhere around there not quite sure of the configuration uh, I just took a glance on their web web page, but yeah, so this is the mini. I believe it's a hybrid uh, It sounds like either like 1 DD 2 BA or 1 DD 1 BA But yeah, so this is the fat frequency maestro mini now. They are a company out of Singapore This is not chai fi. This is uh, Singapore hi-fi and um, from a look at their website, so uh, they have a lot of requests or orders for the uh, Maestro series. So right now they are backlogged by three weeks. So it's three weeks before the, they ship out the IMs. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so you can take a look on their webpage, Fat Frequency or FatFreak.com. But they have four different series of IMs. So they have their Musician series, which is like a bass emphasized kind of I am. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. There's a little elaboration on their page. You can check it out. But then they have their reference series, which is like their flat, neutral uh, tuned I am. Then they have their signature series, which is kind of a balanced, uh, high end, high fidelity kind of sound, but but more in between neutral and V shaped. And then they have their Maestro series. Now their Maestro series is the fun kind of V shaped tuning. Uh, lots of bass, lots of treble, very fun tuning signature. Um, now the Maestro Mini clocks in at $470, which is a little pricey. Um, 
and but we'll we'll kind of get into that um and they are a niche boutique uh manufacturer i don't think they're a very big manufacturer it's like three or four guys out of singapore um they look they appear to be like friends in the audiophile scene or whatever so so props to them it's really cool that they're doing this kind of thing um you know i'm down to support that so but um but anyway so this is the maestro mini let's get into it now it comes in this huge heavy case this is like the same case that you would get with um like the mim dark magician and uh but inside it's a little bit different now i will critique this uh truth or not truthfully but honestly like i would with anything else um i do not think this cable is acceptable at all for this im uh, at the very least, I think they should include a secondary cable. Now, there's nothing wrong. Like, it's not, like, necessarily, like, a low-end cable or anything. Um, but it's just not great. Uh, first off, the ear hooks are very stiff. Now, they have these wires inside um, that are meant to be, like, memory-shaped. So, like, if you have, a you know, a curved head or whatever, you know, or, like part of your head is is shaped a certain way you can shape the ear hooks the way you would like them and they and they stay so um so not really a complaint in that area but they are incredibly stiff and the hooks are really hard um instead of this like and this is just like vinyl uh heat heat shrink vinyl um instead of this heat shrink vinyl i really wish they would go for uh like a um a, a silicone um, more manufacturers should go with a uh, silicone overmold instead of this heat shrink. And uh, if you do it in black, you don't have to worry about color changes or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just just very cheap feeling cable. Um, it, you know, the conductors may be great quality, but for $475, you really... And, and even the plastic molding, like this, um, these strain reliefs here, are just really stiff. It just... It feels like something that you would get with the $20 cable. Now, I imagine this is the stock cable because this is the cable that the owner sent with the IMs. So please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. If this is not the stock cable, um, then let me know because there is no branding on it. It doesn't say anything about being fat frequency. But, um, but yeah, this is what the owner sent with it. So I'd imagine this is the stock cable. That's probably something I should have double checked on, but you know what, whatever. So anyway, so cable's a bit disappointing, at least the cable that came with these. Um, the build quality is okay. I'd say it's above average. Uh, it's not uh, the greatest I've seen, but it's not the worst I've seen. There is a visible seam where they attach the top of the face plate to the body. Um, <clears throat> and it is fairly obvious that it, it is a 3D printed uh, shell. I could be wrong on that, but it seems like a 3D printed shell. Um, and then they have this serialization here. Um, so there is a serialization. And then we have the connector there. Connector quality seems fine. Um, but yeah, all in all, um, I'm, not, I'm not disappointed and I'm not really impressed. Um, but yeah, it, now it does have, I will say this, it does have a UV coating, so like a UV resistant uh, lacquer on there, which is good. Um, there are, but there are some like surface cracks. Uh, this is not from the owner. The owner did not do this. This, this is a part of the IM itself. And you can see that hairline fracture there. So that kind of stuff is just kind of evident of poor poorish quality um unless somebody opened these i hope someone didn't open these i'll have to speak to the owner because they're both the same way um they they may have actually been repaired too but yeah there's a very there's just a real evident seam on both of these um which is kind of kind of i don't know i'm just not not a big fan of that but yeah, there's a big seam on both of them, and there are hairline cracking. That's that's really indicative of a, a faceplate that has been taken off and put back on. 
Um, but the owner never mentioned anything about having them uh, reshelled or rebuilt or anything like that. And um, uh, what was I going to say about that? Um, there's also some faceplate damage too. So on this unit here, there's a little bit of faceplate damage underneath the lacquer. And you can see the lacquer is completely smooth. So that damage existed underneath there. So... So there's just a few things that I, I'm not a fan of about the build quality. Um, the, also, these punched steel uh, uh, vents here, or you know where the soundboard is, it's just cheap. It's just very cheap. Um, I would have preferred them go with like a, a mash or something, or or maybe a, a press fit metal nozzle on the on the uh, resin body just to make it look a little nicer. Um, this this punch steel plate is all messed up because I think the owner tried to pull it out and look inside. Um, so obviously that doesn't count, but you can see how how thin the metal is and how they bend. So, so anyway, those are my gripes, um, but that's pretty much where the gripes end. So overall build quality and cable, I'm not impressed with. Um, the the case is nice but i mean you can get these for like 12 bucks online or whatever so so far hardly justifying the 470 dollar price tag although i do understand they're a small company they have overhead whatnot singapore is not a cheap place to live so everybody's got to eat so um but the real question is sound quality um if the sound quality is there does it justify the 470 dollars well, let's dive into that. First, I'm going to take a graph of these, and I will show you guys the graph, and then we'll do some uh, some listening tests, and we will get into my uh, observations and uh, my review about the sound. All right, guys, so here is my quick and dirty graph of the uh, Fat Frequency Maestro Mini. Um, got some odd things going on here. Now, these are kind of... I don't know. I'm so I'm using CP100 ear tips. So uh, this stuff up here could just be the uh, depth, like these the misalignment and the peaks here. Um, but the rest of this, there is definitely a little bit of channel imbalance. It's not the worst that I've seen. Most of it is within a cup, like a dB or two. Um, so all in all, I, I will say this: they don't sound bad, um, but. Um, I have seen better and I have seen worse. So let's average these responses real quick. And we will just go into this. All right, so this is the average of both responses. So this is pretty much what you can look forward to uh, for the tuning of the Fat Frequency Maestro Mini. Um, so it is definitely a V-shape uh, or a big U. Um, but yeah, so we have a huge bass hump here, uh, nice bass emphasis. Uh, sucked out here in the mids for the most part, but doesn't really sound hollow because of how wide it is. Um, mainly, the majority of the energy is, is isolated to the base here. And then we have um, our peanut gain, which is a really slow rise. Um, but then we get up into the presence region. Now, this is where most of the perceived uh, resolution and detail comes from. So, uh, this area here has got a little bump. You see, we get this little hump here pretty much at is that 4k yeah so no that's 4k i mean it's a little bit low but that's still in the same area um uh 6k is right here so just a little shy of 6k uh, and a little shy of 5k but yeah so this is where a lot of the perceived detail resolution stuff comes from um and with this kind of tuning, when you suck away at the lower mid area here and you emphasize this upper mid area here, uh, it really adds to the the sound stage uh, and kind of the layering and stuff. This is the whole purpose of like, for instance, uh, Moondrop's VDSF target. Um, so they, they boost this area right up in here, about the 4K, probably about the same area, 4K region, maybe a little bit shy. I think they, they go like right up to here. Um, and then they go back down. It's not as varied. Uh, you see you get a little dip once you get into five and six. 
um, and then you get a little boost again after that reclaim just a little bit of energy and then it kind of tapers off after like 12 or 13 all in all this is not very bad it doesn't look great doesn't look good but I can I can say firsthand that it's really not bad um, and I can kind of see what they were going for with this so you get this nice uh, sense of, of space and stage um, and detail resolution all that stuff technicalities get kind of a bump or at least the perception uh, the technicalities may not be there but the perception of it goes up because uh, your your brain is being fed uh, more information here um, so it's pretty much the way that the brain works is anytime something reaches like three to five db louder than its surrounding uh environment or surrounding you know noise or whatever uh the brain tends to focus on that area so so the boosting here uh basically creates the perception of uh detail and resolution and all that um and like i said it can benefit the stage and whatnot and you can um uh, get better imaging layering and um you don't really get necessarily like a wider or taller stage that stuff is more dictated by the um the performance of the i am the actual like technical ability but you get kind of a pseudo um bump in uh in stage size because uh because a lot of the mids these larger frequencies here they occupy more space they kind of clutter up the mix and they're being sucked out so anyway that is that Oh, by the way, just a brief cat intermission. Uh, she had her babies. She had four babies. The babies are doing good. The babies are in her little uh, thing underneath my bed here. I'll just show you guys real quick. You got four babies down there. You're on the corner. Yeah, mama. You see the babies? See the babies? Yeah, so I got four kittens chilling underneath my bed right now, and they're about four or five days old. So that is your cat intermission. All right, so back to the Maestro Mini. So we uh, analyzed the build quality. We've looked at the cable, all that stuff. Um, what's left? Well, sound. So let's get into the sound impressions. Um, my other device here, it, the battery's getting a little low, so I have it on the charger. So today, we are going to be using the uh, Qtelix Q5K, so this is going to be our source. And uh, I'm just going to pick a random track, I am not. I won't post it on the video or anything. But uh, yeah, so let me just uh, pick some tracks, and we'll get to listening real quick, and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Um... So I spent a few minutes listening to these. Um, to, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys. I don't. I don't really care for them. Here's the thing, okay? And this is what is making my job so difficult. And one of the reasons why I haven't made any videos recently is when you are me, okay, and you can make anything you want and make it sound the way you want it to, like exactly the way you want it to sound, okay? And granted. I'm not I'm not the, the most experienced audio engineer or whatever. Listen, I I have a, a huge background in the audio industry, okay? Not well not huge. I'm saying like a, a long time, okay? I've spent a long time in the audio industry. I've spent years kind of honing my ears um to, to, to be able to mix, master all that stuff. EQ, isolating frequencies, all that stuff. Okay, it's been a long time, about 15 years doing that stuff. Okay, but I'm just a little little fish, a little peon. But I, I know my ears, I trust my ears very, very well. Okay, so when I go and build something, I, there, I hear every little teeny nuance and there's certain things that bother me and I spend time on them and I try to tackle them and fix them or whatever and sometimes it's just not worth the energy sometimes it's beyond my scope of knowledge or whatever it's just outside my time frame i don't have enough time whatever anyway when you can make anything you want it makes reviewing things so much harder because what do you compare and contrast to 
Do I compare and contrast to other things in this price range? Do I compare and contrast to things that I think sound good, to stuff I've made? Where's the bar get set, you know? Um, because, you know, I can make something that I personally think achieves total, you know, TOTL or, or you know, $1,000 sound performance or whatever, quality or whatever, you know, that I think just sounds amazing. And somebody else might listen to it and say, yeah, you know, whatever, it's it's average. You know, the, the hobby is so subjective, but I'm very spoiled because I can make whatever I want and listen to it. So I'm going to try to keep this, this uh, review uh, uh, balanced or, or, or grounded with other IMs that I've heard in the the approximate price range. Now I haven't really heard anything exactly, you know, four hundred and I think I think they're like four twenty or four seventy. I haven't heard anything exactly in that price range. I've heard stuff five hundred dollars and I've heard stuff three hundred dollars and three fifty. Um so I'm gonna kinda go on that. Okay. And so with that being said, um I don't I don't like them. I don't I don't like them. I the bass is too loud. It's it's a little muddy. It's a little boomy. Um, when you get into the sub bass, it does have decent characteristics, um, but the mids are are veiled. They're um, they're pulled back a little too much for me for my liking. The upper mids bring back that clarity and, and kind of regain the clarity, but the timbre's off. The timbre doesn't sound very good. Uh, the balanced armature sounds, uh, it's got like ringing or a little bit of um, like metallic sheen, metallic timbre to it. Um, so I just, unfortunately, I have to give this I am a hard pass. Um, now I do respect the builders very much. I respect what they're doing. If you're someone else, you may, you know, like these. But for $470, I can think of many other IMs that I would rather get than these. And let me just, let me just um, preface this by saying the first rule, and, and Crin Crinical will tell you this, anybody who really, really knows their audio or their IM game or their IM stuff, anybody who really knows what they're talking about will tell you, the first rule, and I've, and listen, I'm a hypocrite. I've broken this rule many, many times. Okay, but the first rule to making a, a good IM is proper ventilation. You need to vent the IMs. If your IM is not vented, it is not a good IM. It can be much, much better if it is properly vented. These are not vented. Okay, I'm sorry to say that. These little vents on the top. This is not vented, okay? This is just so the driver can breathe, okay? That's not an actual vent that passes through to the nozzle here. So when you put these in your ear, any kind of pressure or suction, um, any kind of movement that you make, opening your jaw when you're talking, you know, or any kind of movement your jaw makes, the sound changes. It wobbles. The frequencies go wow, 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 you know, wow, wow, like that kind of stuff. Anytime you make any kind of movements, any kind of adjustments, you push them in your ear, you pull them out, you're constantly fiddling with them, all because they're not properly vented. Um, and with these shells, like I said, I'm, I'm like 99% positive that these are 3D printed. The fact that they did not add a vent is very sad um, to me. I think that they... they should have just taken the time to properly vent them um and it's a shame that they didn't especially with the amount of money that they're charging it's just way too much of an ask i've heard kz's that sound better than these i've heard um shit uh, trn's that sound better than these um so i'm just gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna bash them into the ground um because they're honestly not the worst I've heard, okay? But for the price, for the money that you're paying, the 400 and some odd dollars, they are not worth it. Now, that is for the Maestro Mini, for the $470 Maestro Mini. That does not include the Maestro, okay? And I'm sure there are there is DNA 
from the Maestro that is in the Maestro Mini. And I can hear glints of of that that kind of fidelity and the audio quality. And, you know, there are certain things that do sound decent on these, but they're just not worth it, in my opinion. Um, they just kind of fall short of the price that they're asking, the performance that they're offering. Uh, it's just not not enough, um, in my opinion. Um, my... And, and and not to toot my own horn or anything, but like my Aphex, I think blow the water out of these, like just no competition whatsoever. And I even have like little prototypes here. These are base head prototypes. Yeah, they're definitely busted. But I've heard a lot of stuff, single DD, whatever, um, that you know, just you can DIY it, you can buy it, you can do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, so. Not a recommendation in my book, um, but like I said, I do have respect for the company. I do have respect for what they're doing, um, but yeah, I just I think they should uh, rework these. Um, I think they should figure out the issues with the balanced uh, balanced armature timbre. I do understand that it is a um, kind of a uh, tuning profile that is an acquired taste for some people, and some people really like it. I don't really have any complaints with the tuning. I just have complaints with the the technical ability, um, the way the bass comes across, the quality of the bass, um, the the texture, the the kind of masking in the mids, the muddiness and stuff. The the tuning, personally, I, I would do it a little bit different. But that's me. That's everybody. You know, everybody has their own tastes. So um, I, I do see what they were trying to you know come across with these but unfortunately the technical performance um is just not not there especially where uh, budget ims come in um you know i haven't heard them yet but i would probably i mean i could imagine i that i would probably take project red over these any day and you're talking what 50 bucks 60 bucks or whatever versus 470 so all I ask, guys, if you're watching my video, I do apologize um, for being very critical of your IM. But I will say this. If you can, revamp it, make a 2.0, vent the IM, uh, figure the figure out the timbre issues in the upper end, and, um, and you should be straight. After that, they should be fine. But those are the two big dingers that really kill it for me, especially the venting, the cable, the the questionable build quality or questionable history. I don't know if these were used and they were um, repaired or whatnot. You know, like I said, it's the same on both sides, and um, you know, I, I have no idea. But anyway, that being said. Uh, this is the Fat Frequency Maestro Mini, and I will give you um, one more look at the graph if you uh, want to see it again real quick to show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. Alright, so the problem areas um, in here, right here. Okay, sub bass is fine, everything's fine here. Oh, this kind of curve here, uh, you can ignore that. That. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have my calibration file plugged in right now, so that's why it's kind of curved. Uh, but anyway, this is the problematic area, um, and then obviously, you know, a little bit of sucked out mids. I understand that's that's part of the tuning. That's fine, whatever. Um, but the the issues with the timbre and everything in there, um, stage imaging. I mean, it's it's not bad. It's not. You know, it's average. It's maybe a little above average. Definitely not worth the $470. Um, but yeah. So anyway, guys. So that's the uh, Fat Frequency Maestro Mini. Um, I, As far as making videos, I will get back into them soon. Um, I will have updates for you once I start to shell uh, Project uh, Barcelona. I do have some really, really cool faceplate material that you guys are going to love. Um, besides this stuff, this this is just the beginning. 
So anyway, I got all kinds of exciting stuff uh, to share with you when they are finished. Um, I also have some repairs that I've done here. Um, so maybe I'll do a review. I've got some campfire audio IMs. Um, I also have the... Uh, uh, I need to send these back to the owner, so, but I have the BGVB, uh, DM8, uh, that were recently repaired, so, uh, we could probably do a quick, uh, down and dirty review of those, um, those actually sound really good, I think those probably sound better than these, the DM8, um, I actually like them, but they're all balanced armature, so it's like a different, different ball game, but anyway guys, I will catch you in the next video, peace.